Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and today we're going to be talking about the Difference Blend Mode. It's a really powerful blend mode used for both image alignment and, of all things, color grading. So I'll show you image alignment because that's typically what you're used to, but watch what happens when we start using the Difference Blend Mode for color grading. Here's one effect, here's another effect, and here's another effect. Now, watch this tutorial, and at the very end of it, please download the actions. I want you to take advantage of them. All right, let's hop in. I'll talk all about the difference blend mode. So I want to take the time to talk about the difference blend mode. Now, there's two ways that I use a difference blend mode. I'm going to show you those two ways here. And at the very end of this whole tutorial, I'm going to give you some actions that make it all easy for you, okay? Because this stuff is not very simple to wrap your head around. It's very complex. The difference blend mode, typically the way I use it is for one of two ways, either to make sure that Photoshop aligned the pixels in my image correctly, or two, to color grade. So let's first, before we get into that, let's talk about the difference blend mode and what does it do? Okay, so difference, it looks at the color information in each channel and subtracts either the blend color from the base color or the base color from the blend color, depending on which has the greater brightness value. Blending with white inverts the base color values, blending with black produces no change. I don't know about you, but I know me, if I read that, I'm like, what in the heck are you talking about? I can read these things and I can get a basic understanding about what's happening here. I see something with some inversions, I see something about blending with black creates black and subtracting pixels from each other. But that's about all I gather from this. It's very difficult for me to read these things that I see on the HelpX Adobe blog, or anywhere for that matter, and try to put it into practical application. So what I do, is pattern repetition and pattern recognition. Once you see patterns repeat themselves, you can always reproduce this process. It's very cool. So let's hop in. So typically what I would do with the difference blend mode in an image like this is let's say I had two images I was stacking on top of each other to try and blend them together. Well, I've got a copy of this background layer. If I change this one on top to the difference blend mode, look what happens. Everything turns black. Why is that? Well, that's because every single pixel on this image is be either being subtracted or added and the resulting inverted color, whatever, blah, blah, difference blend mode does, okay? What I'm seeing here is that as the pixels are stacked on top of each other, if they are the exact same color, they subtract each other out. And if you have a pixel value of 127 on top of a pixel value of 127, with that 127 set to the difference blend mode, it's now subtracting them from one another, and now we get black because zero would be black. If I press V for the move tool, just move this up right here real quick, now you can see that there's a little slight difference, right? Well, what's happening is some of these colors are still the same and others are different. So as you're moving this around, Photoshop is adding and subtracting all of those pixels to give you the resulting inverted color underneath, right? Because that's what difference does. So if everything's lined up perfectly, we shouldn't see any edges around each other like this. If we look right here, this isn't aligned very well. If we turn this off, turn this on, we can move this over, right? Until we get exactly where we want it to be until those layers are aligned. The difference blend mode is a great way to align layers because it subtracts those pixels from one another until you get it right spot on. This is great when you're doing anything like focus stacking or if you're doing uh, panorama building or maybe some HDR or maybe some exposure blending, whatever that might be where you're stacking a, a layer on top of another layer and they're pretty much the exact same thing or very close to, you can use the difference blend mode. If it turns black, then you know you got good alignment. If it's even slightly off, then you know you don't have good alignment. That was just me nudging it up once, nudging it down once, nudging it down, nudging it left, nudging it right with the arrow keys, okay? So that's the, the, the typical way that you would see me use a difference blend mode in the past. That's pretty much all I did with the difference blend mode. Well, now I've come up with a different way to use the different difference blend mode, specifically with color grading, which is really quite an awesome experience. So the only way to really wrap your head around this is to actually just add a solid color fill to the uh, the canvas. And again, the actions that I provided for you will do all of this for you. But I'm not showing you till the end because I want you to understand. Okay, so we turn solid color fill on and I'm just going to change this to a very pure form of color. Let's just make this a pure form of blue. Okay, press OK. Now, if I go down here to the difference blend mode on this solid color fill layer, look what's happening. So what we see when we do this is a great color grading experience, okay? We had the solid color fill layer of blue on top of our image. But when we change that to the difference blend mode, 
what it does is it takes that blue and it applies itself to the black areas and transitions over to yellow. Why yellow? Well, yellow is the complement of blue on the color wheel. So what you're essentially doing here is you're color grading with one color and using its complement on the other side of your between your midtones and your uh, highlights and your shadows. So the color will apply itself to the shadows and then transition over to the highlight areas. And as it transitions over, it's going to bring its complement over to the other side because there's that inversion that happens with the difference blend mode. Now, if we were to do something like this, like um, change the color to, let's say red, look at the difference now. Red is now applying itself to the darkest dark areas, transitioning through the midtones and giving us a nice transition into its complement in the white areas of the photograph. The thing that you need to know about the difference blend mode here is that opacity is only going to really change the intensity of how it applies itself to the image, where fill is going to change the calculation of all that subtraction and, uh, and adding that's happening with those pixels. So watch this, as we drop the fill down, you'll start to see that the red starts to transition out of the midtones and more towards those darker areas rather quickly until we get to about, you know, at 30%, we're basically saying red is only applying itself now to those shadow areas and it's very slowly transitioning into a cyanish color, but not the full potential of cyan now over here on the whites. Look at the before, full potential of cyan, full potential of red. Here we get a deeper red and a lighter or brighter version of the color cyan. So yes, we are using the color red to do this, but think about things in terms of opposites and how they work here. If we change this back to something like blue, watch how it transitions into yellow. So how do we think about this when it comes to color grading? Well, let's pull up an image here and use this photograph. It's a really good photograph to work on because it's got a lot of lights and darks with very minimal color in it. So if we were to go to a solid color fill and apply the solid color of blue and use the difference blend mode, it's not going to look good. All right, folks, don't, don't look at this and say, this is how Blake said to color grade, because that's not what I said. If we drop the calculation or the fill, we're going to see how much less that blue applies itself to the shadows and how much more the yellow transitions into the highlights. But watch as that happens here. Here we have a pure form of yellow in those highlight areas. As we start to transition this down, we actually start to get a really nice looking color grade that we could work with here. So with this set to blue, we're seeing a lot of blue in those shadow areas just here in the peaks of these rocks. I'll zoom in so you can see that. And then the rest of it transitions into a yellow outside the image. So really what we're doing here is we're using blue to do a yellow color grade. Huh, interesting. That's because of the opposite color wheel. If we were to double click on this and we were to go into the yellows now, look at that. We're using yellow to color grade with blue on the photograph because of the rules of complementary colors. So I, I don't want you to focus necessarily on what solid color fill you pick for this. I want you to pick a solid color fill that you like and then go ahead and just move this slider up and down to see the color that you want to color grade your image with. Even something like this cyan is beautiful because it's actually color grading with red. So we'll press OK. If we drop the opacity of this, we're reducing the intensity of the difference that's happening there. So the fill is the calculation of where it's applying itself to the image, and opacity is the intensity of that calculation, how it applies itself to the photo. There's the before, there's the after. But if you want to experiment with this, now that we got this set to about 40% opacity here, we'll just call this 40% and 20% fill. If we double click on this, we can move this around and just start to manipulate that color in such a beautiful, beautiful way. I mean, look at that. I mean, we're talking about really controlling the emotion of the viewer now in a very subtle way. And why I like this, you would say, well, why don't I just use a solid color fill set to the color blend mode? Well, why I like this is because as it applies that color to the image to pull that color into us, it's also using the inverse relationships of that color to naturally color grade either those highlight or shadow areas with our color. So watch this. We just bring this all the way up here and bring this all the way up here. Okay. So that would be the intensity of this thing if it was all the way up at the top. That was with a pure form of color. But watch what happens as we move to something like the midtones. That's a totally different color grade than what we saw up here 
because the intensity of those reds is much less, and it's now more into maybe a sepia tone. And this would be a beautiful color grade for the image. If we went with something like this and used this color instead, all the calculations in that different blend mode and how it applies itself to the image are changing based on the colors that we're telling it to add, subtract, multiply, divide, or do whatever the heck <laughs> the difference blend mode does, okay? So we'll just drop this fill down and look at that. I told you it's less about knowing exactly how every single pixel is gonna subtract itself from another pixel, and it's more about repeated patterns. I know that by looking at this and repeating this pattern several times that I can get a really decent color grade just by dropping that fill and dropping that opacity. Look at that. Look at the mood that's brought in with this image. And you know, of course, you don't always have to be subject to just using the solid color fill with opacity and fill. You can also double click inside here and use any of those blend if principles that we've talked about throughout the course of these videos. If we just drop this down, look at that very beautiful transition of a color grade there that just finishes off that image so well. If you double click this, experiment with different colors. I like where the cyan is heading, but look at what happens if we change this to red and really pull in that cyan. Or we change this to cyan and start pulling in those reds because again, the opposite color on the color wheel of cyan is going to be red. All right, so you have to, you really have to think in terms of the color wheel here. Because if you try to apply green to this and say, why isn't this color grading green? You're not taking into account the fact that there's the inversion process that's going to happen with those colors when we choose something like green. So when we choose green, we're actually using magenta. That's just how difference works. Look at the other areas in the colors that we can select here, though. We'll bring this fill back up to 100% and bring the opacity to 100%. We still have this set to the difference blend mode. If we double click inside the solid color fill and see what happens when we go more towards the lights. Look at the difference now. There's a big portion of that blue area that's applying itself to those shadow areas. If we come down here, now it's less about that complement that's happening in the sky and more about the blue that's applying itself to the image. So here we have a, a big uh, difference between just what's happening right here on the colors and what's happening here. And why doesn't it change much with this? Well, it did say that if we blend with black, there'll be no change, right? So if we blend with a color that has a high value of black in it, the area that the highlight areas will not receive quite as much of an adjustment, but the shadows will. All right. This is where we start controlling things based on patterns. This is for shadows. This would be for highlights. This would be for a mild adjustment. And this would be a very strong, pure color adjustment. We get a nice color grade on our highlights. Here we get a very nice one on our shadows. Here's more of a mild mix between both. And here's pure color. So where does that come in? Well, I've made a series of actions for you here. If we go to the difference blend mode with Blake Grudis, if I press play on the difference light, it's going to be a very mild version of a color grade because it's, a, it's not gonna be affecting too much of your highlights, just really your shadow areas. If you adjust this, it's already set. Don't move this, okay? This will move based on the actions that you set down here, but you move your color to get your color grade in those shadow areas where you want it. That's a very nice subtle color grade with the difference blend mode. Here we go with mild. It's gonna be a little bit more intense, but here you get to choose your color and you can always drop your opacity from here. They start out pretty high, but that's so that you can tailor in exactly what you need for the image that you're working on. Look at that difference, man, it's beautiful. If we go to pure, again, that's gonna be your pure color selection, whether that's a pure color selection for uh, reds or cyans or magentas, whatever you think your, cut, your image needs. Let's talk about that. How do you know what your image needs? Well, think about color and color theory and what colors are going to control or manipulate the viewer into feeling something, okay? Cold in, cold colors will make them feel colder. Warm colors make them feel warmer. They will make them all feel happier. Blue will be sadder, okay? So when we think about that, here we feel a lot more sad and down in the, in the, in the dredges of life, whereas here, it's a little bit more uplifting. It's a little bit more positive, all right? Right there, about right there, be nice positive sunset, something like that. Obviously the image has some mood to it too, so you pick the color that's based on the mood that you want to set for your image. So you'll notice that what happens is after you press play on any one of these, it's automatically gonna pop up with the solid color picker here. Why is that? That's because I want you to pick the color. I start out with this cyan color because I love the way it adds the color grade with the difference blend mode, but I want you to be able to go through here and change the color to whatever you want.
okay and then if you do this last one this difference in the rich shadow areas it's going to produce some very very rich shadows in your photo uh, to really make those shadows deep and dark if you're already working on a deep and dark photo like this they're going to be really dark but if you're working on a mildly dark photo they'll pull in those shadows in a beautiful way now this isn't just uh, the end all be all okay uh, what i where i use this type of color grading is towards the end of a photo to me this photo is done and complete and is ready to go into artistic processing so what do i navigate with artistic processing that's where I go into things like palette effects, which is one of my panels that I've built that helps build the color grade for the image, okay? That's another place where I would use these different blend modes. So I've got my image good. It's technically great with tone and color. I'm ready to move into the artistic realm. That's when I start using these different blend modes or any of these color grades. Does this mean that this blend mode color grade is better than any other one? No. I'm just giving you an option and an alternative. So please, 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 please download these actions. Take advantage of that. We covered a lot here, and I know these actions are going to help. The basic idea behind the difference blend mode is we can use it to align our layers so that if we have an image that looks relatively the same, maybe it's an HDR bracketed series or something that we're going to exposure blend, we want to make sure that everything lines up perfectly, we can use a difference blend mode. And where we have perfect alignment is where things start to turn solid black and you can definitely see the edges of your image. That's a great use for difference blend mode. The second one is going to be right here with color grading. And we showed that in a very unique way using the color wheel and the opposites on the color wheel and how it's going to apply itself to your image just know that if you use the color cyan the typical color grade that you're going to get on the other end is going to be something like red because of those complements so focus less on the color that you're using in the beginning to pick it and focus more on what you want that to change to as you move that slider up and down so why is this better than other ones well as you saw here while it applies the color grade to maybe the highlights or the shadows it's applying its inverted complement to the other areas which brings harmony into the image it's a great use for color grading in a photo and probably something that you haven't really seen. The big kicker, the difference blend mode is controlled by fill. Fill is the calculation. Opacity is the intensity of that calculation. Again, my name is Blake Rudis. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and fill your brain with some new insight on an awesome blend mode that would otherwise be trash. <laughs> All right. You guys have a great one.